What is up guys, I am Daisho, and I am back with uh, some more of my Let's Play. And it took me a little while to figure out, but after I defeated Garuk, I actually unlocked a new campaign, which is Arch Enemy. But I think I'm going to finish this campaign before I go move on to anything else. Looks like I still got lots of places to go, and uh, I'm going to have to defeat Tezzeret if I want to unlock a new deck. So I'm not sure, um, I'll probably use the, uh, the burn deck to defeat Tezzeret, that'll be my deck of choice this time. Haven't used it yet, I only got owned by it with, uh, when I was trying to fight Koth a few times, but after that I, I uh, used the green deck for a couple of straight games, so I think I'm actually gonna switch it up, maybe make it a little bit more interesting for you guys, even though it means that I'm not gonna be unlocking all the cards. I, I, just a couple of minutes ago I took a brief look at all the cards in this deck. Um, I think I'm gonna mulligan mainly because I don't have enough land. Yeah, this is a little better. What is this gonna do? Destroy target artifact? Yeah, okay. I'm happy with this. Um, I'll play this creature turn one. Here, I'll bring him up to you guys. Basically, unless I play another card, it's gonna deal one damage to target creature, tap three. Which isn't bad because I don't even have to tap my creature if I want to deal damage. The only problem is it's gonna end up being three life for one damage, so it's probably not gonna be worth it. But I remember in the old game, Tezzeret was the guy who had the blue artifact deck, and I assume it's gonna be the same in this scenario. He's got that blue artifact deck, and he, uh, he's got some cancels and mostly artifacts that build on each other and enjoy having other artifacts on the field, but Terramorphing Expanse, I like that card in real life. I haven't seen that. I mean, it wasn't in the old game, so that's nice. Of course, he's going to wait until uh, end step to tap and sack it, but if you guys didn't know, basically it just lets you find whichever land you want. It's good in decks with different colors because that just basically means that... Oh my god, I'm an idiot. Okay, I'm not even going to play this guy yet. I can't believe I didn't see that. <laughs> I could have gotten an extra damage through. I thought it was some other creature. So, um, yeah, alright. Just, I'll end my turn. So basically, Terramorphic Expanse just lets you find another land in your deck. So that's pretty good. Now, oh wow, he's got three lands in this deck now. What's that guy do? Artifact spells cost one less. That's a really good card. I know it was in the, uh, the old deck too, but it's just pretty much amazing. And, um, alright, what should I do now? Let's see, I got this guy can destroy target artifact. Is this guy an artifact? He's an artifact creature, so I think that's exactly what I'm going to be doing. Um, especially since I'm playing against an artifact deck, I should probably save it, but I don't want him to get his creatures out early or his spells out for cheaper and stuff like that. So, I don't I don't I don't mind doing that. That's the, I mean, I think it's a decent enough play. And um, obviously, this guy you might remember from the old game. He's just he's just a four or five. He doesn't do anything special. Um, I'm hesitant to keep flashing these cards up because it actually stops the time. But this guy seems pretty good, especially later on because you have to have. Okay, what does this thing do? Landfall. Whenever land is the battlefield, you may pay two if you do draw a card. That's also a really good card. It basically lets you draw whenever you play a land. I mean, you still have to pay two which is a little expensive, but it looks like I'm actually going to get some damage through because um, I, I'm i going to... I mean, I could play this thing, not this this guy, but I don't think it's worth it. I'd rather get a 4-5. That way I can be swinging for 5 next turn rather than just swinging for 2 more this turn. I mean, I could be swinging for 4 more next turn. And uh, anyway, I'm going to be playing this, this creature one of these earth elementals. They were in the old deck. I don't know. I don't know. They're, they're a decent card, four or five, but it's it's for a five cost, so it's 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 all right. It's not the best card in the game or anything. Another Terramorphic Expanse. <laughs> so this guy, uh, oh, actually that's really good because Terramorphic Expanse counts as a land, so that's what he just did there. He paid two to land to, uh, to draw a card. And then, ooh, I got another land, which means that I can play this card. Let's see. What life's he at? I can deal seven, eight. I can deal ten damage if I want to this turn. Or I can just deal eight and then have my, uh, my what's it called? Earth Servant out? I think that's, uh, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play the Earth Servant. But uh, basically what he's going to do is then he's going to sacrifice his Terramorphic Expanse. And then another land comes into play, which means that he gets to draw another card which is definitely in his favor. But anyway, I have pretty much 
intense board position set up on him. So I don't know, maybe he has a card like Evacuation or something in his hand that'll just get rid of all my cards and make me like start over or something that gives him like, like there's a card called Soul Conduit which switches life totals, but I don't know. Oh, sleep. Okay, that's not bad. He's putting putting me to sleep. Basically, I can't play any of my cards. Uh, I mean, my cards don't untap ne this turn. Um, okay, so I have six lands, so I can either play the five Kai or the two three guys. If I play the two three guys, then I'm basically wasting this plus two plus O oh ability, which I really don't think is that important at this point. I'd rather just get as many creatures out as possible. Whatever, it doesn't really matter. But look at this guy. He is a 6'10 now. He's got plus O oh plus one for each mountain I control, and I got, I think, six of those guys out on the field, so definitely doing well he's it seems like he's kind of struggling to survive at this point he's like playing sleep making all my creatures die he's drawing more cards I mean he's definitely got a significant card advantage on me but he's got more lands out what is this guy he's just a 4-4 and I don't think it's really gonna matter cuz I got I got so many more creatures than him I don't even need to play this card I'm just gonna swing in with uh, with all my creatures and uh, see what happens there. I mean, there's no, even if he blocks my four, then I still have tons of damage. Here, let's uh, let's play with him. I'll just show you what this guy can do. Um, and I'm gonna do it again. Ah. So I, I mean, that basically just allows me to deal two damage with this card. And obviously I didn't need to because I'm gonna end up taking him way lower but that's what I would do if I was playing and I needed more damage to get through or something but obviously that wasn't the case here because I brought him down to negative 12 so I don't know I don't know why Koth was so hard maybe maybe it's just this deck is really good but that was pretty easy and I I am definitely happy about that I think I'm actually gonna make this a two for one episode and maybe move on to the next uh, evil planeswalker who I have to battle and I'll stick with this Koth deck because it's uh, it's doing pretty well for me. I've defeated Tezzeret and unlocked Machinations. But first, before I have to do that, I have to go take a card out of my deck depending on what uh, what it gives me. Which card I unlock? This guy, Battle Cry and Haste. Wow, that's a, that's a very good card. Um, let's go back here, deck manager, and let's uh, do this Strength of Stone deck and take out something. Let's find something worthless. I'm thinking. I'm thinking Molten Ravager. This guy is a uh, a zero four. Where is he? How much cost is he? Did I pass him yet? Yeah, I must have passed it. Where are you, sir? No, 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 nope, nope, nope. There we go. Molten Ravager is a three cost zero four. So I mean, he's got tap mana for uh. But I definitely don't like it. I'm definitely going to take him out of there. I would much rather have this card any day of the week. This card is... I mean, artifacts seem to be pretty strong in this in this form. Maybe I should take out... The, yeah, I think I'm actually going to take out this card. Okay, so put this guy back in and take out one of these Earth Elementals. Four or five doesn't do anything, and it's five cost. I, I mean, I guess I'd rather have the zero four for three cost, to be honest. Let's save and quit and go back to this campaign and I don't know I'm kind of excited to try out that multicolored landfall artifact weird deck but first I would rather fight Kiora Atua with this uh, strength of stone deck and see how it works out for me if I don't then I'm gonna switch to that other deck and it is it should be pretty cool I am definitely gonna do this in the same video I didn't I didn't do an outro or anything so I can't just I can't just stop in the middle that would be evil but uh by the time this video goes up, you'll already have the video that I'm rendering. Ooh, Claws of Valkut. I got two of them. This is a really, really good card. Chanted creature gets plus one, plus oh for each mountain you control and has first strike. This card is amazing. And, uh, 1-1 one, one Mountain Walk. It doesn't look like Kiora Atua is going to have any mountains, but it's a one-cost creature, and it's a one-cost 1-1, one, one, which isn't the worst thing. It's never, it's never a bad thing. Looks like I drew another one of those guys. I would really like to draw at least one land. That's all I really need for now, but obviously I would like more for Claws of Valakut. Um, in the end, I'm probably going to put it on this guy because my other creature already has Mountain Walk and he already gets... I mean, it already has First Strike and he already gets pretty strong. Explorer. I like Explorer. It's a good card. It basically allows you to mana ramp and it lets you draw a card. 
The only problem is it doesn't take it from your deck. It uh, it takes it from uh, you. You have to have the extra land in your hand if you want to uh, ramp, which uh, unfortunately looks like my opponent didn't have any lands in their hand, or maybe they just made a mistake or something. But anyway, let's play another one of these guys. I really need to draw that land next turn, but who knows what'll happen? Maybe I'll draw it. Maybe I won't draw it. You just gotta, you just gotta have faith in the card. So it's a green blue deck. So I already am a little excited about this deck. Maybe it's going to be one that I'll reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a non-land card. Put all cards revealed this way into your hand. That's pretty good because that basically means that... Alright. One. What? Why did you get two? Oh, non-land. I don't know. Why did you get two cards? That confuses me. Anyway, now I have a, op a decision to make. Do I want to play Molten Ravager? Do I want to play Rock Slide Elemental? Maybe this guy give my creature plus two plus oh, or do I just want to give them claws of Valakut? I think I'm gonna do the last one. That way I can start getting some some heavy damage in pretty consistently. Because now I got another five and they go all the way down to fourteen, which is a decent amount of life I'd say for turn three. I guess it's all right. It's not the worst thing that ever happened. Next turn, I'll probably play this Rock Slide Elemental in case one of my creatures happens to die. Uh, what you got there? Undo Giant. That's that's all right. I'll just swing with my 4-1 first strike next turn. Leave the other guy back to block. Ooh, Act of Treason. That could be useful in the future. But for now, maybe I should just put Claws of Valakut on... Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. Put it on this guy. That way, they each have 4 1 first strike, which means that his defender is pretty much useless to him. And option now they have the Kyoro Tua has the option of taking 8 or losing her creature, which the point of the creature is really to get you land, which is going to be helpful. Hopefully, what's going to happen is in a couple of turns, since she's been playing all this mana and stuff, she's going to get a huge creature out, and then I'm going to lay Active Treason. Put target creature into its owner's hands, put X. Oh no! Oh, okay. It's just one creature. I thought it was power, but it means that my enchantment goes away, which is rather unfortunate. It doesn't. It doesn't kill me though, so it's not the worst thing ever. Anyway, let's see what we can play. I think it's time to get this guy on into the battlefield, just just in case some sort of creature dies somewhere along the line. But. I'm obviously going to keep attacking because I've got first strike. I don't need to worry about that one defense that that creature has. I don't think that'll give me a counter on my 1-1, uh, one -one, but I'm not sure. Apparently it does give me a counter. That's great because I know that tokens don't go to the... Well, oh, actually, I, it says whenever a creature dies. Again. Huh. That's That kind of sucks because that was, that was a good creature. I mean, I guess, I guess it just goes back to my hand, but I, was, I mean... In the end, that's actually just going to help me out. I don't know what this card is. Tax each turn, 5-4 haste. I could use some land here. I'm not going to lie. I wouldn't mind having a couple more lands. But it looks like he's, ju he's just going to be exactly the same as he was last turn. I wonder how many more of those cards um, Kyoro Tua has in her uh, in her deck. But anyway, he, he's now my... my uh, if you, I don't know if I've showed, shown this guy yet, but here we go. First strike, whenever another creature dies, you may put a plus one, plus one counter on him. So he gets really, really strong and powerful, especially in this deck, because I think it has it has a, a few burn cards, not not very many, but a few cards that can kill enemy creatures. Um, when it enters the battlefield, reveal your top card. If it's a land, put it into play. Okay, it's just another 1-1, one, one, but... I don't like the fact that they're building a, an army of 1-1s. One what is this? It's just a 3-3. Three, three. Um, a 3-3 three, three is a little bit significant at this point because that means that I can't attack. Ooh, that's that's very good. Never mind, because I'm actually just going to uh, lay this land and then play this card, which gives one of my creatures plus 2 plus 0. Oh. I'm going to choose uh, this guy, actually. So um, I'm... I'm going to attack now, I think, would be the right move. Because, well, if I attack with this creature, and they block with the Octopus, and then and then the three one one tokens, then I think we would trade. Which, pr actually, no, we wouldn't, because I would deal the damage, first strike damage first, and then I would get stronger in the second main phase. So never mind, I was wrong with that. So basically that just means that my creature just gets stronger and they have two less blockers. So 
um, it's it's really good that my creature is just growing so well. It's now already a 4-4. I mean, it's a 6-4 right now, but in general, it's going to be a 4-4. Can't forget to play your land every turn, and now, obviously, I'm just going to pass the turn. So, I mean, I hope that they attack with their... Okay, what does that do? Is that just... Oh, no, it's got Shroud. That's not good. If it didn't have Shroud, I could play... If you didn't know, Shroud means that I can't target... Nobody can target it with any abilities, but otherwise, I would play this card on it and then get that card and just basically uh, win. I hope that they attack with... No, they're not going to attack. Anyway, next turn... Let's see what I drew. Ooh, this guy, Battle Cry Haste. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, let's see what I can do. Uh, if I swing with my 5-1, it'll die. And I mean, it might die. If I swing with my 4... Well, either my 5-1 or my 4-4 four four will die. But let's see, I can get 4... Yeah, I think this is I think this will be the right play. I pretty much think that I can win this game. Mythic? I don't know what that means. Maybe it means that I played a mythic rare card. Yeah, I think that's what that means. I think I think this basically means that I win the game. Um Yeah, okay, my creature does die. But let's see how much damage Oh no, my creature Yeah, my creature does die. Does it? Oh, and wow, I took him down to one. Well, that's that's rather unfortunate. But either way, I'm going to be able to win. <laughs> You're attacking. It makes sense to attack with the 1-1 because it knows that the 1-1 won't be able to block next turn. So, I guess it makes sense. Cultivate. Still trying to get that land out, I see, even though it may not be completely beneficial. I mean, I don't know. Another cultivate. Wow. Wow, getting those lands out. I mean, I assume that the deck I'm playing against has a lot of really, really powerful creatures. Like, like even the one that's on the field right now is pretty powerful. Um, uh, what should I do? Eh, why don't you give me that 1-1? One, one? <laughs> Just for funsies. I'll, I'll attack with your s token. And swing in with everyone. And that should be game. Unless they have a fog. I don't know if that deck runs fog. But I doubt it does. Um, oh, no blocks. And that's it. It didn't even it didn't even go through all the the motions and stuff. I guess it was because that was first strike. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this little commentary of me defeating Tezzeret and then I don't even remember the other person's name, Kiora Tula or something like that. Hope you guys enjoyed. Have a nice day. Bye.